Hello and welcome to the World Environment Day special show on the NDTV Detol Banega Swasthya campaign. As we grapple against the COVID-19 second wave, it is even more important to make that connection between health, climate, and environment. Enhancing environmental health through better air quality, water and sanitation, waste management, along with efforts to safeguard biodiversity, will probably reduce the vulnerability of communities to pandemics and thus improve overall societal well-being as well as resilience. World Environment Day is celebrated on 5th June around the globe to raise awareness and also to take action on urgent issues from marine pollution, environment pollution and global warming to sustainable consumption, drastic climate changes, greenhouse effect and wildlife crimes. The World Environment Day 2020 theme is ecosystem restoration. focusing on resetting our relationship with nature in 2021 we must take deliberate steps to move from crisis to healing and in so doing we need to recognize that restoration of nature and restoration of our planet is the way to go it's imperative to the survival of our planet and to the human race this year world environment day will mark the launch of what we refer to as the UN decade on ecosystem restoration that will run from 2021 through 2030 this decade is designed to connect and to empower uh, and build political momentum generate scientific research and create a groundswell of support for action on ecosystem restoration a decade might seem like a long time when scientists say that the next 10 years will count most in the fight to avert climate change and to avert biodiversity loss. So it really is our chance to put the planet back on a sustainable course because in restoring ecosystem we are addressing sustainable development and and therefore hitting on the targets of the sustainable development goals and in so doing we're safeguarding human well-being and health. it is important to recognize how important it is to protect the ecosystem to protect ourselves and uh, if we are not able to do this i am afraid that covid-19 is not going to be the last pandemic that humanity is going to face in fact uh, you know 21st century has already seen three pandemics in 20 years of 21st century we have had three pandemics whereas we had just one major pandemic in 19th century So, so the frequency of pandemics are increasing, and it is important uh, that we recognize it. And therefore, the decade of ecosystem restoration, which is the theme of this year's uh, Environment Day, uh, is very, very important. Scientists estimate that zoonotic diseases, that is, disease agents that transfer from animals to humans, account for three quarters of new or emerging diseases in humans. Many deadly pathogens in recent times. Ebola, HIV, dengue, SARS, MERS, Zika, West Nile have taken this interspecies leap. A zoonosis, which is the plural of zoonotic, is an infectious disease caused by a pathogen. It could be a bacteria, virus, parasite or a prion that jumps from a non-human animal to a human. While many theories from conspiracy that it's a lab-made virus to denial, the fact is that this virus found in bats probably transferred to a pangolin or other animal and then to us when these animals were held and kept in unhealthy conditions and then eaten. It's quite rare normally for such a jump to occur. So the whole world has been locked down by a zoonotic disease, basically one that's been transmitted from an animal possibly through an intermediate host to humans this is not the first one covid-19 is not the first one we've had uh, ebola we've had aids we've had mers we've had sars i mean there's swine flu there's bird flu there's almost no end to it 
really what we need to do right now is to make sure that human beings begin to understand that it is we that must obey nature and not that we make nature listen to us. How do we stop this? We stop this by making sure that it's the species that harbor the viruses and the viruses themselves that are locked in into the ecosystems where they belong. If we do that, the chances are we could prevent the next pandemic. This, in fact, is what the Sanctuary Nature Foundation and the Corbett Foundation are doing right now. We're running a very large program across the country and across the globe to ask that ecosystems and species be protected because if we don't do that, then even before we've sorted out the COVID-19 problem, we could be hit by one, two, three, four. We don't know how many other pandemics that might just upset not just our apple cart, but take away most of life on Earth, human life on Earth. While the origin of the SARS-CoV-2 is yet to be fully established, it is clear that over-exploitation of habitats and wildlife trade can play an important role in disease propagation. In the wild, in a wilderness space, animals go around their business as they will and live in a predatory prey cycle in natural balance. When there is high biodiversity or abundance of species, there is a natural barrier in place that keeps pathogens from leaping from host to host as there are innumerable defences in place. When we start cutting down forests, destroying habitats, hunting animals for bushmeat and using them in illegal wildlife trade, we are leaping across those natural barriers and exposing ourselves to pathogens. Habitat loss, reduction of biodiversity, stresses our animals, making their immunity weak. It pushes wild animals and people close together and creates the perfect storm. We humans have transformed the majority of the world's ecosystem, destroying, degrading and fragmenting terrestrial, marine and other aquatic habitats and undermining the services they provide. Human interference with biodiversity such as deforestation, habitat degradation and fragmentation, agriculture intensification, wildlife trade and climate change helps to create the condition for pathogens to leap from animals to humans. Today, COVID-19 is a global crisis. A stark reminder of the complex links between the transmission of infectious diseases and biodiversity. Biodiversity loss is associated with the transmission of a range of pathogens, while land conversion and wildlife trade bring more people into contact with potentially new diseases. See, today uh, we are in a situation where we have degraded about 20% of global landmass. And this degradation has happened largely because of deforestation, intensive agriculture and urbanization. 20% of global land mass is equivalent to 2 billion hectares of land, which is about six times the size of India. So the large scale degradation of land and therefore animal lives and plant lives and microorganisms who depend on those land have, has had extensive impact on ecosystem goods and services. Essentially, this means that we have degraded our soil, we have, we have eliminated forests, therefore we have reduced the diversity of wildlife. Uh, many of the microorganisms, which we do not even know ex existed, would have perished by now because our ability to find uh, animals are also limited. We, haven't, we do not know uh, all kind of animal species that exist on Earth. So large number of animal species would have perished because of human intervention on land and on and also on marine. We have, our marine ecosystem is also extremely uh, affected by, uh, by the fishing industry, for example, or by plastic pollution. So ecosystem destruction has direct impact on quality of life and it has direct impact on quality of, uh, you know, uh, on, it has direct impact 
uh, on other species uh, as well. Biodiversity is very simply the number of species in any given habitat. The greater the number, the greater the biodiversity. Biomass is the sheer volume and weight of species on the planet. And a combination of the two maintains planetary health and balance. So if we have tigers, lions, snow leopards, wild small cats and so on, we have a variety of cat species. If within each we have subspecies, we have a greater variety. And if we have healthy numbers of each of those, we have viable biomass. Now, for all of them to survive, there needs to be a greater variety of prey species, different deer, antelope, boars, mountain goats, rodents, birds, and so on. The prey species needs food, so we have different grasses, plants, insects, etc. And in this way, we have a viable ecosystem that thrives because there is both biodiversity and biomass. For all this to survive, you need habitat. So forests, grasslands, wetlands, swamps, mangroves and in oceans, seagrass, kelp forests, coral reefs and so on. This makes the planet healthy. But as we drive biological collapse, we are making the planet sick. This sickness represents itself in a thousand ways. The worst being pandemics like COVID-19, climate change and worsening air and water quality. If the planet is sick, it's a given that we'll be sick too. It's in our hands to fix this. At the end of the day, human and animal and environmental health are one and the same. And that must be the learning that we take away from this terrible pandemic of COVID-19 and the tragic suffering that we're seeing around the world, including in India, of course. As we degrade uh, the natural world, we, we're chipping away at the very foundations of what makes well-being possible. That means our food, our water, the temperature regulations, economic growth, the roofs of our heads, the clothes we wear, all of that is provided by nature. So the pandemic has shown us that we really need to rethink our relationship with nature. Environmental damage is driven by human activity. As the pandemic has limited our economic activities, consumption and movement, pollutant emissions and natural resources have slowed. The rate of environmental damage has fallen in most areas. But CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere continue to rise and there is an increased use of plastics and biomedical waste. The fight against plastic pollution is being hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. All of us are using masks, gloves, plastic face shields, and also the burden on the system is growing biomedical as well as plastic waste. This is rising daily after the second COVID wave. All this waste has an effect on the environment that incurs dangers on people, animals, soil, and water sources. Experts do believe that COVID will lead to unprecedented and irreversible damage. India is known for not having uh, the greatest waste management systems or, or governance paradigm in, in that sense. We've, we are one of the most wasteful countries and also a bad waste management country. And right now with COVID and therefore uh, biomedical waste, the situation has actually become worse. On May 10th, uh, India actually produced almost 230 tons uh, of biomedical waste. And imagine this doesn't even keep into, you know, take into account non-COVID waste, which is of, of biomedical waste, which is 600 tons. So in total, biomedical waste production of our country right now is almost touching a thousand tons per day. In this particular wave of COVID, we've actually seen a lot of home quarantine, which also means that a lot of biomedical waste has actually gone with municipal waste by our collectors who come and collect our garbage from our household. 
So medical waste is not just restricted, or biomedical waste is not restricted only to hospitals and 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 uh, you know uh, and and big health centers, but also our homes. And it's a grave, grave crisis that we're talking about. The issue is really grave, not because we want to imagine a cleaner world or a waste-less world, because all of this actually has an impact on human health, on individual health, as well as public health. and all of this is linked to our environment since the advent of covid one of the biggest challenges had been the disposing of ppe suits used in hospitals by doctors and health workers and masks and gloves used by regular citizens as many of these are made from non biodegradable material and are single use in the last few months this waste has started accumulating everywhere and will release tons of microplastics in our environment in fact biomedical waste generated per day in the country has almost doubled from 7.22 lakh kg before covid-19 to nearly 14 lakh kg today delhi generated 18.8 tons of covid-19 biomedical waste per day in may 2021 the waste generated due to home isolation has added a lot to these numbers the solution to this of course as in the three r's that we talking about first is is to refuse a lot of these 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 things uh, a lot of uh, biomedical waste uh, and that's why i'm expanding three r's to perhaps four r's or five r's uh, we need to really say no do we really need a ppe kit do we really need to really uh, use a certain kind of stuff so somewhere we need to really start critically looking at our biomedical consumption consumption of these gears and medicines and then comes the disposal uh, uh, of of this that you know there are several studies that actually say that it actually takes almost a thousand years for a mask uh, you know this surgical mask to decompose and similarly the syringes and face shields and everything else so you know consume less dispose properly because it's very important for our environment and also for people who are actually recycling all our waste uh, to, to to treat it well and of course eventually can we reuse some of this and that's the reason why a lot of people have actually been saying that can we actually use a cotton mask instead of a use and throw this thing so we perhaps might be saving ourselves from a temporary or a very grave crisis of covid but we need to be thoughtful about the fact that in the process of saving our today are we also thinking about tomorrow in most places especially secondary and tertiary healthcare facilities there is a complete lack of infrastructure management planning and oversight in how this waste is disposed often it goes out with the regular waste and ends up in landfills or just littering the area around the healthcare facilities it is imperative that we invest more in medical disposal infrastructure if we want a healthy future the safe disposal of biomedical waste and personal protective equipment is an absolute must protecting our biodiversity mitigating climate change stopping the illegal trade in wildlife adopting hygienic practices is the way forward covid-19 has clearly demonstrated that societies need to strengthen their resilience to pandemics and other emergencies while as nations we are improving public health systems and economic impacts of the crisis what is needed is to enhance the environmental health of societies from human health to environmental health this environment day let's pledge to make a difference to protect and heal our environment